right so so what is the while rule so so let's suppose you know about the loop body c okay so it's a constructive proof you you make the proof of the small parts and build the proof for the entire thing okay so you know about c that if you start with some set of states i and loop condition is true then you guarantee to land within i you cannot you execute the loop you, this is the inductive part you start with i you execute the loop and you get back there okay if that is the case you can conclude that if you start with i okay loop can go as many times as it wants and you land up with an i okay but at the end you have to exit the when you exit you get extra information ki the condition has failed right so you actually land up i and not f okay so let me reiterate that the, the, this is a lot of things are is packed inside this rule so this is an i okay and you know start from i condition is true then you land up in f okay and uh, <coughs> sorry you, uh, you land up in i again okay and uh, so that means it guarantees if you start with i it will loop will keep continue going to i okay but now at the end we exit also so the, the loop when finishes <laughs> the when loop finishes uh, then you will guarantee that the condition is not true and i is true because you always stay in i so the, the question is how do you get i and that's that's a really really tricky business okay so um, so uh, what happens is usually uh, you have a given a pre and post condition starts from here and finish here okay and uh, and you say okay uh, prove it this program is correct but when somebody ask you this kind of question they don't give you i so you need to come up with i so what will happen is you you uh, what you do is that uh, you guess an i okay guess an i when in in computer science when you see the word guess it's it's very very it's not arbitrary statement it's a very very peculiar statement and over time you should get a sense of it what do we mean by guess guess means you have to you have to come up with an i you are not just coin flip and <laughs> come up with you give an intelligent answer to that question it's like when i in the exam i'm asking you to write an answer that kind of setting is this you can say that i can guess and write an answer that's in one choice you can make but this is not what intended in guess whenever we in computer science we mean guess what it means is human has to make an effort so uh, make an effort to make a uh, uh, come up with i okay so uh, so this is what the proof would look like in 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 a big in a full setting okay you will come up with an i okay and then what will you do you uh, you you basically uh, you derive this okay and then you will show that the from the precondition implies the i and also so that the, the thing which you learn here implies the post and then from there this weakening rule you can derive this fact okay so uh, the thing is you may actually prove something much stronger than actually asked okay and then you weaken and then you show it actually that you know this proof works okay right okay so the i uh, finding i is a non mechanical step everything else i have showed you before i've shown you before is a mechanical process you can algorithmically do it because when i was doing this uh, pre weakest pre and like require rule or assign rule they are all mechanical rules you can just apply them but the finding i is a not a mechanical rule and there is no algorithm of finding it you have to come up with it it's like remember you know first induction problems you solve in in your high school right induction hypothesis you ask your teacher how do i come up with induction hypothesis they will never tell you there is no algorithm to it they will always give you the example and then you they give you 10 examples and somehow you get a confidence in your mind that i can do it when it comes to exam but did you ask yourself is it even possible in all possible settings no there is no algorithm that's where mathematicians that's that coffee in induction hypothesis out okay that's what mathematicians do okay and so far computers have not figured it out if the day they will like the world will come to end as we know it okay okay
right? Okay, so so let's look at our example. Okay, so thing is, uh, so we have a formula given as starting point and the ending point. Okay, and uh, we need, sorry, there's too many, sorry, too many things are happening here. Uh, yeah, uh, <clears throat> right. So so the, the the you have to find a formula at every gap which I have drawn. Okay. So you need to somehow prove this. Start with true. I want to prove r equals to 2z plus 1. Okay. So first, I need to guess some invariant, right? So, so basically, uh, that invariant must be true at the start of the loop. Okay. And uh, then when you finish, the invariant and the exit condition of the loop should imply the final property. Right. That is what being said here. Okay. Right, and then this part should also land up in in while loop. So if you just go one more step back, you say the initial part, the initial this part you execute, should land up to the invariant, and the invariant if you execute the invariant it should hold like as we have discussed earlier about the while loop, and if I can prove these two things, then I have a proof of the correctness of the entire program. Now what is my i here? Okay, what is my i? And uh, just by looking at it. You cannot tell. Okay, as I said, you need to have human ingenuity to come up with i. So let me give you an i. This is my i. Okay, and this is what it's saying is, if you are at the loop head, this thing is always true. Okay, and finding this i is any verification method. Okay, so this is this is something which uh, uh, just just so can. Okay, if I give you this i. After this, when you have this i, everything is mechanical. Now you can run the algorithm, because all other steps are just mechanical, right? So if I give you i, I put this i in this formula. So I have two things to prove: true r equals to one, i equals to one implies i, so leads to i. So what I will do is this is this is two assigned rules. I just substitute value of r and i, see if it leads to true. So you can just make it. Let's just see it. It, it actually works. We have actually this example has. Been shown to you earlier also. Okay, we have shown that these two things hold. Okay, right. So for for this, I need to prove that that key. If I start with the invariant and the loop condition being true, I can always land land at an i. So I have to show something find in the middle. But this can be found in the middle very easily just by applying. Sorry, just by applying the uh, uh, the assigned rule. Right. If I execute the assigned rule from the i, I can I can get there. Actually, this is a nice exercise. If you really not understanding it, you just do this part. You you just take the i, which is this formula, and put i is equal to i plus one. And maybe I can write on the board also. Okay. So um, what is my i? Is uh, i is less than or equal to three. Okay. And uh, R equals to i minus one z plus one. So I have a replacing with i to i plus one. So I will just put i plus one everywhere. So I get i plus one less than or equal to three. Okay, r equals to this becomes i star z plus one. Okay, so this is the formula. So this becomes two. Right, so this is written in strict. This is the same thing as less than or equal to. Okay, and you can check again uh, if you do r plus r is equal to r plus z, it will land up there. It's so beautiful. Just 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 do the like I, I would I would request you to do this mathematics by hand yourself. Once you see it working, you'll realize analyzing a straight line code and which has only branches. Is a solved problem. Okay, today there is a software called SMT Solver. If you don't have a loop, you give it to them. They will tell you program is good and bad with definite guarantee. It's called bounded model checking. Okay, just there's a software called CBMC. Uh, uh, I think for C program bounded model checking, uh, C bounded model checking, 
and it can only deal with loop free programs. So, if you have a loop, what do you, does it do? It does not say that I cannot deal with it. It says how many times I should unroll it. It is unroll the loop that many times and then say okay, more unrolling I will just ignore it. I, I do not know where the, I do not understand the loops and then it will solve it like as there, there are no loops. So, without loops is a solved problem, it is a widely used in industry because the entire process is mechanical and you can give it to the computer and you can solve it. It takes long time, it is a lot of work but of course, you can put thousands of computer on it. Okay? So, loop is the problem, this is the one important message. Okay? Okay. So, basically verification is finding invariance. If this statement is in your head right now, like I am successful. Okay? Rest if you did not follow, does not matter. Okay? Right. Okay? Okay, so, I have been giving you… No. Right. The above things are already known to you, the things are you derive from the known things. Okay. So, you, you, you small parts you prove derive. So, reverse when I am reverse building is, so reverse thing is the things I need to prove. If, if I knew these two things then I will have a proof. The argument can go both like you can develop the argument in both directions. Right. You get pieces you can build things and the things you want to build. Okay you uh, yeah you just simply say okay, if i if i know somebody can help me proving this small two things yeah so sir even in the previous one which we did now <coughs> yeah uh, like uh, all of these were guess you made like guess uh, i is the only guess a rest is mechanical rest is from the formula rest is just mechanical process like the while loop yes but for that i needed only i i i need to guess once you put i everything is a mechanical is an algorithm Sin, sin. Uh, you know that ki how when you was you whenever you see while loop it needs to be written like this like but rules tell you na ki okay, so basically we need to have the rules tell you the excuse me we need to have the like we need to know the rules yeah yeah these these standard rules follow the standard structure you know this i needs i needs to be filled and there is no algorithm for it okay 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 one more thing if i is wrong if you guess it wrong this proof, this entire proof will fall apart somewhere something will not work okay something will not match okay right so right okay so verification equals to finding invariance and that's important thing is like why you are here verification of analyzing smart contracts in solid i mean that's why you are here right in this room <laughs> okay so so, let me go over a solidity contract and try to give you how would you reason about a solidity contract. Okay? So, let this is a contract okay? and contract have variables. So, what is the meaning of these variables are where are they? When you put this contract in a, in a basically in a, in a blockchain, first the byte code I mean let us assume the source code and then let us not get too technical. Uh, entire code gets copied into the blockchain. Okay, it is sitting in there. Then what it does, it additionally create all the variables of the contract, the, all the global variables inside the contract also some get some space. Okay, like you can remember the value of i, you can remember of wherever variable. So, basically you remember c dot i, what is the value of c dot i. Okay? If you upload the same contract again, then it will create another copy. So, let us assume you can't uploaded a contract only one time. Okay? So, there is a copy issue, but let us assume there is one contract okay? for that. Okay? So, uh, once you, you can initiate, initialize the contract. Okay? So, you can say constructor, when it runs, it sets i equals to 0, it can do anything, okay? whatever you want it to do. Okay? Then what it does is you can have functions in the contract let me call it body and there is a reason why I am calling it body. Okay? And uh, you can also increment i, do whatever you want, check i is less than 10 or require whatever. So, the required semantics is that when require fails, you unroll back, you do not change. So, for example, if you say i equals to i plus 1, i becomes 1, but let us suppose require fails afterwards, the, the change will not be committed on the blockchain. Blockchain will like Locally, it will be minor will be running this code body, 
and it says at some point of time it says oh my 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 require has failed it will say okay i'm not committing changes i'm recording that this run has failed okay right okay and the important bit is sorry before important bit this body can be executed by any function so if i am a ethereum user i can i can take any contract any function in the contract i can say run it i have to pay for it okay i can make it run so that is the but thing what you can do is typically you check like who has sent you like in the contract you can write down only run if the require the user is equals to me okay some particular user okay otherwise it will just won't run okay okay so um then uh, so the properties are not any specific special function it just happens to be another at another function it has a one assert written in it it also can be run any many any many number of times you can basically check i gets an equal to 0 any time okay so let's suppose you have a such a uh, such a contract okay it said it has assert written in it and you want to check what it does so the thing is this implicitly there is a loop here there is no loop written in the here and this is one thing you need to internalize these functions can be run any number of times so they are all in a giant loop okay and any possible time there will be some invariant must be true all the time okay let's check this contract is good for us or not okay so you have a, a basically uh, it's i think it's called 202 simple split dot sol let me see it is the correct one right this is the one okay this is the program i'm starting at 1 doesn't matter okay uh and uh right so let me run it and it found some invariants so it is saying that this is true about this contract always so what did it learn i is never less than 0 basically it's saying <laughs> okay so it's a complicated manner and uh i is uh yeah not of uh, i is less than greater than equal to 10 okay uh, notice that why it is saying so okay let me show you a small change in the code and it will change its answer if i check before then does it change the answer oh it actually forgets that very interesting i didn't notice that but anyways it's the fact is there but it did not derive it okay okay so the thing is what it does is that um it doesn't have to learn about 10 because i am checking i is greater than equal to 0 that's only is a relevant fact for me so it will it will just just other invariant if it doesn't learn the the fact related to 10 it's okay because my property is about 0 i is greater than equal to 0 okay now uh i have a question for you if i do this what will happen is this program correct Or is it wrong? Keep on increasing. Yeah, you can call as many times you want. So, excuse me, louder, louder. Only. Yes. So, can you make it negative? No, it's an integer. Integer i eight. Integer of eight bits. So, what will happen? yeah overflow so how many call how many calls later it will overflow 127 okay okay let's see our our algorithm does the job one thing to notice taking bit more time it has to unroll try to explore all possible uh, times it has to execute and uh, oh it found the counter example well i knew that it is going to do that <laughs> okay so so it found 127 calls later the sign flipped okay so this thing can also find counter examples okay right 
OK. Right. So, um, so this is uh, the uh, core of it. Uh, so you have, uh, let's look at three. So this is the, our example, which I have been going over it again and again. And it's written as a, so the thing is the, 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 the we are using a Sol C compiler and there is an analyzer, which is called model checker, written inside it. Not very good one, I must add. And there are other tools out there which are nothing to do with Solidity tool chain. They just take the Solidity contract and analyze it. And the companies who are, you can buy those things. They work far better. But the one inside the Solidity, I, I managed to break it so many ways, okay? So I was worried I will be able to teach effectively. So if you play with it, you will find that a lot of things you will do wrong. It is not properly, uh, it's not like, it's experimental mode still, okay? So let's put it that way. So, uh, so the, for example, here, if I give this contract, it will not, it needs to find the loop invariant. It needs to find what is the invariant, what is true at the head of the loop. But it will not report it to you. It may be able to prove it because it doesn't print anything happens inside the function. It only remembers, print reports only on the, uh, the contract level. So, um, so if you check uh, this program, 03, Hmm. It, it succeeded. So it doesn't report anything because there's no global variable to report on. But I wrote the same program into a split form, which I've been talking about, fourth. Okay? So uh, in the split form, so you can also open this program, okay? And um, right, so uh, to try to answer this question, um, try to run this and try to answer this question. Fourth question, the zero, fourth file zero four dash quiz must be there. Did you find that file? Right? Uh, just you want to go to the folder and click on it, it will open it. And try to answer these questions. So what is the largest bound, like I am bounding at 9, what can I in keep increasing it and what point it will give the error? Can you just play with it and what will the last, largest value of z? for which the contract is safe. Okay, so I'll just go around and, so now we will play with the sequence of uh, examples and you play with them, make minor changes and uh, see. Let's go around and see if, it, if somebody needs help. Okay, so uh, I see many of you, uh, Managed to do it, so okay. So let me give the solution anyway. Okay, so um, so if I go to sixty-four here, it is supposed to give error. Let's see if it works. So if we give a counterexample, it is saying that if at sixty-four, if Z is sixty-four, then what happens is Z is being added two times. So 64 plus 64, 128, and it overflows. But if you do 63, it says safe, because 63 plus 63 is 126, plus 1, 127, you do not overflow, okay? So, um, okay, so the second part of the question is if I uncommented, sorry. So it finds a bug, okay? It says that this thing does not hold. The reason being, the reason being it is checking all the time. This property function can be run all the time. So even just after construction, you can recall it. And when you can call it initially, it's initially this fact is not true. It is only true when you have run, you already had run loop body two times, right? 
and the third time you cannot run because it has a requirement of you cannot root call root body at all anymore then only you should check okay so the check has to be put in place so this is this is illustrating an idea ki there are things in life needs to be checked only conditionally often okay your parents will ask for like do you have a job when you graduated in college not before okay so so you have to always check check things against conditionally sorry yeah so condition is what condition is x i is greater than in, let's say 3 or something no greater than equal to 3 let's see okay one more thing i want to tell you uh you can cheat here okay cheating is means right false you never check you are always safe <laughs> okay <laughs> right so so this is like a, it is one big problem here right if you give this thing in the hands of a programmers and say okay write assert and you need to tell me in what condition you check the assert but the, the guy always writes false he said okay i don't love thousands of lines of thousands of asserts give me money but everything is guarded with false and it's doing nothing okay very very tricky business to turn this into an operational business model if you hire a company to write asserts in your contracts how do you know they have written a proper require okay require means in what conditions you check okay very tricky business but yeah people are working on it the problem is solved like somewhat solvable basically you try to guess try to figure out what conditions they are not checking okay so yeah okay right so um right so this is uh, this contract uh five okay so this is another example so uh, as i said earlier uh, how far how much time do i have 15 one second 11 oh i still half an hour okay so okay right so um this is another program eq.sol okay fifth program in our list and uh, so what is ha happening is this program correct or not tell me just look at it stare at it tell me it's correct or not so fifth program in your tech okay so what is the reason why it is correct So what is the invariant? What the invariant will you write? I equals to I equals to R, right? And I is less than eight or nine, whatever. Yeah, is less than eight. Yeah. Right. So uh, I will show you this. This guy will have, I think, trouble proving this. Let's see. it is saying r can r plus 1 can potentially overflow and look uh, it gave an answer is a weird answer we have not seen this before we saw when it said when it said sorry mispronunciation when it said that something is wrong it gave you a counter example but this time it did not give me a counter example it said might have it. okay and it proved the assertion assertion went through the assertion we wrote i equals to r that for that it actually found the invariant it it knows i equals to r look at the invariant if you read it carefully it is saying i equals to r in a very complicated manner but it is saying i equals to r okay so that worked but overflow business did not work so this can happen so what it to avoid overflow it needed to learn that i is less than equal to 8 it did not learn that fact so this is thing is this is i said that if i this was algorithm for invariance right there is a gap this is a like some sort of a lack of better term some kind of learning help it looks at the code and learns what invariance it needs to get and i am using learn in a very loose sense it is being recorded i didn't need deep learning or whatever but okay <laughs> okay uh 
right? So uh, it learns the invariant, and sometimes it may not be learned the appropriate invariant, the need that needs to be learned. And at that time, neither, and then it will try to look for the counterexample. And it could not find the counter, that's why it took some time. Neither it could find the counterexample, nor it find, learn the right invariant, then it will only say, this is called false positive. Okay? False positive means, uh, basically it is saying that there is something wrong, but it is not wrong. Right? And these kind of tools, often given hands of the programmer in the industry and if you go to conferences and they always say too many false positives. It doesn't work. Okay? <laughs> and they don't want to use it. Because in a small program in like this, they will be like tens of thousands. And their manager will say, read each one of them and tell me why your program is correct. I say, I don't know my program is correct. It's truly saying I didn't know anything. So why am I supposed some idiot telling me I can't analyze your program? Why should I go about ex thinking about it again? Right? The guy is not good. Why am I being bothered? So there are software like Covarity. Okay, I should not name any specific software. Okay. <laughs> so there are software out there which are being sold, which being bought. They have false positive issue, and they report. They said something can potentially can go wrong, and uh, programmers don't like it. So the name of the game is today to build tool which reports minimum false positive. And that's where a lot of machine learning techniques, like you just look at the thing, uh, let's not report this. Okay, there's a low priority. Maybe things are wrong, but let it pass. Okay. So keeping the programmer happy is also an option. It's also, it's also an objective. Okay. okay. So it gets uh, gets uh, murky as, as as you go along. However, however. If I've been a bit clever about writing my requires, I can make it work. Uh, how do I do that? I can just simply say and r less than 8. And this will know it proves it. It doesn't change the meaning of the program. Program still has same meaning. You, what the r less than 8 did, it gives extra information to verify. Here is an important fact, maybe you can use it. So as a programmer, you need to be aware of these analysis tools and their limitations. And then tell it how oh, here is the inform extra information. Write programs in the same patterns again and again so that you can analyze. This trick is being extensively used by hardware developers. Intel and all those companies are building you know, chips and they're writing programs. The chips are designed as a, as a program, right? And they basically stick to very strict patterns. They don't like arbitrary programs, okay, such that subsequent analysis tools can understand what they are saying and then first produce good circuits on the chip, which are not hot, take less space, things like that. And also, you can do good analysis. Okay, okay so, um, right, so, so. Uh, this is five. Okay, seven is a sort of a, your exercise. You can just go berserk on it. Uh, zero six is, is something is not a verification thing. This is something I want to, to talk about. Um, about I have not so whatever I have done so far. One thing maybe disappointing to you to some of you is that I talked about smart contracts, but actually I'm just talking about how to you know find bugs in a program. It's nothing specific about the smart contract. So what are the issues in the smart contract and how can you check them? Okay? So this is one important class of works, okay? which smart contract writers often make those mistakes and uh, the tools are being built which can check these things. And unfortunately I couldn't make it, make it check this example on this particular tool and I just, I'm still working on it. So let me just show you the problem. Okay? So this is a sort of a this is a deposit fund is a contract, okay? And this you can see there's another attack contract. So there are two, one, one contract will attack another contract, okay? And try to understand how this mistake happens, okay? So, so bug I have written here is the bug, so you know where the mistake is. So let's just try to understand. So what it does, this deposit fund basically maintains the balances, okay, for the various addresses. So everything is an address. You are an address in Ethereum, a smart contract is an address. For example, in Linux, everything is a file. Here, everything is an address. Every object is an address. So you are an address. 
So every address is assigned an amount of money associated with it. Okay? So what you can do, deposit, you can deposit the money, you can basically call this function. And uh, when you call this function, there's an implicit variable called message. Okay? So you basically message arrives to the miner. Okay, in this contract called deposit. So message will have some values in it. So, so, so basically there's an implicit variable, it's not explicitly stated anywhere. So message dot sender name sender send you this like you know amount of money. Say okay, I have put a bound of hundred. It says that you just know what to report it. Okay, and then you add that value to the uh, basically sender's value, whatever. Uh, okay, this can balance you add the seven by hundred. Okay, right. Withdraw. So when I if somebody calls you for withdraw, you check you take the balance of the person. Okay, you need to send like. Whoever is withdrawing, you check their address. Message dot sender is their address, okay? And then you read their balance, okay? So when you get their balance, you uh, you check if it is greater than zero. If it is not greater than zero, you just not execute this, okay? Then what you do, you basically you withdrawing this is withdrawing entire money. It's no amount here. So this withdraws everything. This is very simple code. Either you put some money or take entire money out, okay? So, uh, so what is this function doing? So what happens is, in, in, uh, you, um, you, when a message sender sends you, look, uh, go ahead, uh, take the money, withdraw the money. Well, I have recorded the money, I have reduced the amount of money, where did the money go? I have to send back a message, here is your money. The how I give the money. Okay, so basically you give the money to another contract and they will be, have a function in which the C. You take them, okay. So that function is being called here, okay. So basically what you are saying, you send it, you call the that function, okay, uh, which is called uh, fallback or receive, it doesn't have a specific name. So it has a fixed name in a standard, but you don't have to give the name, it just it knows you are trying to send money. Okay, so you're saying sender call basically whoever is sent the message, they will call the basically M unnamed function. Okay, this is the name of the function. It means call the default function which receives the money. Okay, and then what do you do? Uh, if the money does not go through, then you basically for revert everything. Don't change anything. Okay, so basically if it if calling the sending the money fails, then you basically uh, require it, and then it will roll back. Okay, and then you write to basically say message money has been sent, and then in its address you write zero. Okay, so what can then go wrong in this one? Okay, simple thing. So this attacker contract will comes along and reads this code is published. He reads the code. He says ah, this guy doesn't know what he's doing. So he writes this contract, okay? So he says, well, I'm going to, when I get allocated, I will pick up this, this deposit funds contract. And uh, when I'm being created, I will basically, uh, uh, basically create, basically put my, basically uh, my address and uh, put some money there, okay? Right, so, so what will happen is the attack works like this, okay? Read this code. You deposit some money. You deposit one, one unit of money, one ether, <coughs> and then you try to withdraw that money. Okay, that's it. That's the attack is. Okay, but there's a slight complication there. Okay, when you try to withdraw the money, the send when the deposit the withdrawal will run in the victim, right? They will call your callback. So where is your callback? The callback is called this this function callback. You call the function without name. Remember that? Right? So in, in that, there you call the function this function. This function without a name. It means when name is not given, there's a default function to be called. And that function is called fallback. Okay? So uh, the, you call the fallback function and what it does 
it calls a withdraw again it is calling in the loop and it's taking money in again and again and again and again contractor keeps sending victor is keeps sending the money this is called reentrancy bar this would not have happened if this line was written before because if you call the reentry that this this check will be made the balance will be already zero it will stop and exit right the mistake was before you uh, before inf bef you did not change your internal state and inform the world that i am going to change my state but that that can be exploited okay so uh, so there is a feature in in uh, uh, in this solver which basically can check reentrancy re check checks it says that it does but when it try to run it it is not reporting this if you give this contract to them this uh, it will all say all fine okay so i am not able to figure out why that okay but uh, just to to tell you that where the technology is where uh, the limitations research basic research opportunities is, is huge so right now if you are someone who can write this a certain and requires okay for per contract the rate goes in hundreds of thousands of dollars okay to really fortify a contract okay if you are a freelancer you can do this and make a lot of money so just uh, yeah so the so this is uh, this is something okay so that the one thing i want to add here is that uh, maybe the try the next problem seven okay so i i will stop here and you work on the seventh problem and then uh, we will uh, we will be around and help you okay sure yeah, any other question please ask you can ask Yeah. So the thing is, uh, so this is a callback. Basically, it's a callback, right? You call in external word function, okay? And you don't know what they're going to do, okay? When you wrote the contract, so they can call you back again. So you they create a loop. You can keep. like they call you you call them they call you again and then you can go in and loop okay now this loop uh can make you send money again and again okay if because this is a money sending uh call look at this call payable it means you are sending money okay right for ex attacker has this function right fall back so what is what is your question so like uh, that function is sending the money you told that it is connected to external external system yeah so uh, the right so the attacker will uh, take advantage of the external um, function to you need to expose your functions to the world such that they can do something with it if you block everything then again okay, so you, you, the purpose of contract is to interact with the world okay okay that's the intent okay if you will block everything as, as i said this, the, the car that doesn't go anywhere is a safe car okay <laughs> yeah okay right so so try the seventh problem um, the question is in the middle right this written as a q Oh sorry there's a mistake <laughs> in your file minimally okay okay so just to be on the I saw server's message I said okay we'll take pictures Okay, so uh, the the question is, you there is a require written in the, basically you're playing checkers in this game, and then uh, there's a there's a statement which says how do you capture the enemy, okay, 
and uh, if you run it as it is, it will sort of crash. The, the question is, how do you strengthen this require condition such that you want to minimally reduce. You don't have to write, if you write false here, everything will become safe, right? So you, you want to reduce as little as possible.